Raymond in Arizona, usually we are, we're doing a show where we have questions for you, but I'm willing to flip the script for a little while. What you got? Yeah, well, I just want to get an understanding of your your definition of, of God first. Because um, I'm under the understanding that, well, everything is put in order, and we know nature has an order. There is got to be something behind that order. So that sure. order in my point in my understanding is greater than the ones that's in following the order. So I would call that a higher power. And some people call it God. So the question was, do you believe that there's any God? So if we would just say mm-hmm. something that's a higher power Yes, I do believe that there's a higher power that orchestrate and put an order into organ into an organism that operates in an order that science identified as facts. Okay, so uh, to answer the question at the beginning, basically, which is, <clears throat> do I believe in any god? Uh, I don't hold a belief in any god. And I don't find changing definitions to go like, okay, what about it's the greatest thing that exists or anything meaningful. Generally, when engaging with uh, conversations of God, uh, I am engaging with in conversations of the God of classical theism uh, or like we did earlier, where I was able to accept enough that the person who said uh, God is is something which has all three omni qualities. That's that's good enough for me. Uh, And so. It's not really meaningful to say, for me to say, this is what I believe God is, and therefore I either believe or don't believe. What's more meaningful is to hear what other people say, and then if it's within reason, I will accept their definition and assess whether or not I believe in their version of God. But there are some people who just go, I believe God is love, for example. Well, I believe in love. And if they're saying, well, if you believe in love, therefore you believe in God— that's such a contrasting definition to any sort of um, any sort of actual theistic claim of what a god is that I would reject that definition outright uh, because there's no meaningful okay. way to engage further in society and still say, "Oh, I am a theist. You are. Which god do you believe in? Love. Uh, it 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 has too much baggage." Okay, I would say I would just give more. Um insight on my belief as far as um, where I get my evidence from. So now everything that's put into this universe, let's say put into the earth since we're uh, witnesses of what happens on earth. We can see patterns. We can see seasons. We can see an order. We can predict based on logic and observation, that there's an intelligent design behind the principles and the dynamic of how the earth sustains itself. Everything is purposely put to help and to connect to the whole for the whole to be a whole organism. So this means that it's got to be something intelligent that's providing all of this necessary Uh, products of what we need in order to continue to propel and evolve into the greater of what we are now. Because as you know, um, we're we're just like everything evolves and, and, and becomes greater. See, something had to put that in order because it's there by evidence. Raven, so now, saying the phrase, be- okay. Raven, hang on. You've just said a lot. And what it all comes down to is, here's something that's kind of scientific. Here's a way I'm going to use some scientific language. And then it just comes to, because there has to be something making that happen. But that's not, you haven't, the, the thing we're disagreeing on isn't evolution happens, isn't that there are physical constants. It isn't any of that. It's that you say there has to be, there must be, and you haven't established why there must be. You haven't established that there has to be. And so 
what it sounds like to a person like myself, what it sounds like to, I'm going to guess skeptics in general, Eric can tell, say whether or not he holds the same thing is that when you observe all of these facts and you see that there are so many gaps and you go, well, we still don't know what did this or what did this. We don't know a why. There's these why questions that I can articulate that we don't have an answer for. That you look at all of those and go, but I can create one concept. And because that one concept kind of technically answers all of those questions, that makes that answer true. And I sit here and go, it sounds like you are just incredulous. You can't imagine something. Therefore, you would rather insert an answer rather than wait for the right answer. So the difference for me is I look at the constants and somebody goes, why are the constants constant? And I go, I don't know. In fact, I don't even know if that question makes sense. Just like if you ask me, what color is jealousy is the famous atheist uh, question. It sounds like a very profound question. What color is jealousy? But just because you can articulate a question doesn't mean it deserves an answer. And there will be questions that we don't know are in that realm. So when somebody says, why are the constants constant? Not only do I not know why they are constant, I don't know if that's a more meaningful question than what color is jealousy. It may not have an answer and it may not be a meaningful question. And, uh, Jimmy basically took the words right out of my mouth. Um, so Raymond, just to kind of summarize what you presented us, you said, you look at nature, you look at reality, it's complex, it's wondrous, it's ordered. You can't imagine, or you can't think of a way that this can be without an intelligence behind it. Therefore there must be an intelligence behind it. Does that summarize? It, yes, it's illogical even from just a human perspective to look at anything and just say it popped up. This is why scientists- That's not what anybody says. People, that's people, we study. Ra Raymond, we, that's we not what scientists- Raymond. Okay. Raymond, scientists don't s just say this popped up from nothing. That's a that's a caricature. They study- uh, uh, Christians and other religions- that's that's, Science don't say that. Raymond, Raymond, let science, him finish. Yeah, science doesn't say that. So I'm Raymond, sorry. the whole concept of things popping into existence or, or people claiming that people claim things popped into existence, that's a caricature by usually religious folks trying to, to undermine science. Going back it's to my original to thing there. Thing. There may be things yeah. which pop into existence on the quantum Maybe. level. That's it's very, very interesting. Yeah. It's very yeah. interesting. Hawkins radiation is pretty awesome if you read about it anyway. Um, but Raymond, so you said that that's logical, what I presented to you, and I said, no, it's not. I, I tell you that, no, it's not. That's known as the argument for incredulity. Just because you can't imagine how something is one way doesn't mean it's that way some, by some other means. Just because you can't imagine how X is true, therefore X is false. That, that's fallacious thinking. That's not logic. Okay, let's just look at the facts that we have an intelligent design. Let's just look no, at the tree. No, you're, stop, you're, 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 you're front loading, stop, stop. Raymond, you're front you loading intelligence into your, you're front loading intelligence into your evidence. You can't do that. Now you're going right. circular. You did, it, it's a circular argument now. Exactly what I was going to say. Okay, it's essentially a circular thing. It's like you said, I'm going to prove there's a God. So let's look at the evidence. Fact, there is a God. That's not proof. Assert, reasserting the claim. So we do not have a fact okay, that me... there is. An, and hang on, stop with the interrupting. Okay. I know you've been listening to the other yes, calls. Sir. I don't like it. Just let me finish. Every yes, sir. Uh, uh, fuck. It threw me off. This is why I don't like it. it, it the uh, as far as whether or not there is a god, as far as whether or not there is intelligent design, you need to have evidence separate from the assertion that it's just apparent. This was actually one of the principles that Matt and I disagreed on, uh, uh, which, you know, people love it when we disagree. I don't agree that the appearance of design is in nature, that, that I think that that is something that we are programmed to believe, that basically, as you okay. are taught what design looks like, that there are shortfalls to it. So you have to talk to somebody like me who's entirely autistic and looks at crystal formation, which is very structural and predictable, and say design is present because oh, no. oh, X, no. Y, or Z, and not just that it looks like it's present. Right there? 
Can you hold on one second? Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> Eric, is it? Right, how many seconds we do on here, though? I don't know. Um, I'm going to do some numerology. I say we wait 15. Because yeah. I just popped in my head. That's my that's my process. Yeah, Raymond, we do need to know how how long, how many, when you ask for just a second, how many seconds we do? Right, it Raymond, makes me wonder. i um, on hold and maybe come back to you here. Cause... Are you back, yeah, Raymond? Yeah, I, I... Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm back. All right. I was actually going to mention, Raymond, um, how many of these attributes that you look at in nature that are evidence that it's created, I wonder how many of those attributes the creator shares. Like, well, is your creator intelligent? Yeah, because we is have your... intelligence. Anything that's an okay. operation, it has an intelligent design behind that operation. And from the sales, is your God an operation? From the atoms, Raymond, so Raymond, it, is your God? Is your God intelligent in operation? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, then it must have an intelligence behind it as well then, right? Possibly, because it is multi-universal. Okay. Who knows okay, how, so, um, where it stops. Okay, so, so you just pose an infinite it, regress of it, gods. It, okay. Who knows where it starts it, is my problem. You've, you've, well, it's we like, do know it, that... It's like you've said you know the answer to an equation, but then you've said, but I actually only know the first four digits. And by the way, I don't actually know the equation, but it equals 2b pi squared plus a bunch of digits. I have no idea if they're there, uh, but that for sure is the answer. And within the equation is the existence of all humanity, earth and stuff. It, you have not justified any other parts, any parts of the equation. You have not, you've just said in the equation is the formation of earth and evolution and the universe and physical constants, but there's probably lots of other things in there I don't know. And in the solution is God, but I can't actually show the work to get from side A to side B, uh, and, but I'm just asserting that I'm sure they're there because I can't imagine the answer to the equation not having God in it. That so your initial question when you asked you said you have questions about atheism and it seems to only be one why don't we believe in God or what is rather what is our definition of God whatever our definition is or whatever in definition we're engaging with you have not come up with anything that is actually evidence of the God you've only come up with places that there are gaps and questions that don't get me wrong. Sometimes I go crazy thinking about what the answers to those questions are. Sometimes I have existential crisis, but just because of that, I'm not going to fill it in with an answer that is convenient, but unproven. Okay. Let me ask this. Well, let me just say this because I'm, I'm looking at nature and I'm seeing that this is total evidence. And this is the fact that the matter that everything in operation has needs and every need is supplied every need what, that what rock is in what rock existence. what needs do rocks have what needs do rocks have yeah you said what needs do rocks rocks yeah you said everything have in operation need to be connected to the earth rocks have no, they need don't. to be connected to the no, earth no they don't without rocks no, they the don't. earth don't exist you Raymond, there's lots of rocks no, in space no 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 raymond you just said you just gave a need of the earth, not of a rock. You say without rocks, the rock earth doesn't the exist. Earth so you can, you can try the and world. say, you, excuse me, Raymond, stop. You can try and say the earth needs rocks, but that's a bit like saying, I, a human, need water. I am water. So it's true, but I wouldn't be human without it, but it also is me, 70% of asked, me. It's not, it, that's not, but I you, asked you what the need of a rock was, and you said to fall you to earth question. or to be held to earth. Excuse me, Raymond, let me finish. You're showing like the last I'm caller sorry, that sir. you aren't listening I'm because sorry, interrupting is not a function that someone who's listening is doing. You said yes, the need of the rock is to be held to earth. There are tons of in fact most of the rocks 
in existence are not held to earth. Literally most of them. And a rock doesn't actually have any need. And by the way, the earth doesn't need rocks either because the earth doesn't need to exist. There's nothing that shows that it has a necessity to exist. That's why it used to not exist and will one day also not exist again. So from both ends of your, of your everything has a need and that need is given for it, what you're describing is everything falls within the universe's seeming laws of physics that rocks do fall to the earth when let down, but that has, you're then asserting, therefore God is the problem we've been trying to get you to actually address, which is that that's just your convenient answer, not a proven answer. That is just your incredulity and nothing else. Okay, can I say this real quick? Because you, mm -hmm. you kind of made a lot of points that favor, but I'll just go with this point. Law, you said physics, the laws of physics. Now, anytime you have a law, you have something that put a law into order because the law no. serves a purpose. Incorrect. And if you break the law, something happens. Raymond, and incorrect. In Incor if Raymond, broken, Raymond. Okay, Raymond, here, you're now using Raymond. an equivocation fallacy. The word law in, in what humanity does as a legal term is not the same as the word law when we say law of physics. So all you're doing is going, ooh, a colloquialism that we use. I can now more broadly, it's the same shit people do on the internet that drives me crazy about words like gaslighting. They'll say like, hey, I don't believe that your recollection of that event was wrong. And they'll go, stop gaslighting me. And then they want you to be labeled as a gaslighter, which is a term of an abuser. When gaslighting is actually not, not something is like trying to get you to question your memory. It's trying to make you think that you are insane by manipulating you, uh, both psychologically and in some cases physically manipulating a person's world. Uh, that's an equivocation fallacy. And you're trying to do it to us. That example was both to get it off I'm my chest and to explain you what it is. You are trying to say law. I'm not aware of it. I yeah, know. That's I've... why I'm explaining it to you. Law does not mean the same to human society when we're talking about legal laws as it does when you say the word law in law of physics. We use the word law okay. in law of physics because it is similar to other things that we understand, but it is uniquely different. So yes, legal laws come from humans, but that does not mean anything like the law, the laws of physics, the law of gravity, whatever, does not mean that any of those laws are prescribed. So now my, my, my point is this, and I think you, 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 you're kind of bringing up my point again. So that we will have to now study the word, the physics. What is physics? Where, what are the laws of physics? What are the, the things things that we nature? have identified as constantly true? We have gone out and looked yeah. and okay, tested, so and we've done science, and we have we the laws of physics. We describe them. Laws that are legal are prescribed. That's the big difference. Okay, now. I so I'm now, not eliminating the possibility that somebody did create the laws of physics, but I do not have a single piece of evidence other than your incredulity, which isn't evidence, uh, that those laws were prescribed. If you can prove it, okay, I'll now, accept you, your, but you haven't. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll use your point again that you will accept that there is a lawgiver of laws, the laws of physics. Now, that's No, I did not say that's there was a lawgiver. Said. No, no. Uh, no, oh, no. What did you say? I'm sorry. Raymond, I'm so close to just ending because it, it, it seems like you don't listen except for keywords, but I'm not going to. I'm going to try to be patient. I do not see any reason to believe that there is a lawgiver for the laws of physics. I see none. I do not eliminate the possibility because if you can prove to me without just saying, well, how else do you explain it? If you can prove to me the way we prove other things are true, 
then I would accept it. But at this moment, I see no evidence of it, but you want me to take your incredulity, the things that you don't know and can't conceive of, as evidence, because what else could it be? That was what I okay, said. Okay, let me, let me try. Okay, let, okay, so now, now, if there is a possibility that there is a lawgiver to the physics of law, and we know I don't even know if there's a possibility, the physics, Raymond. I don't even know so if there is a I don't know. Mark. Okay. okay. You just so said if we accept say, there is a possibility, that? I don't know that there is a possibility. Okay, so now let's just go with this then. So we do know that the laws of physics are invisible and unseen. And there's something that's forcing these laws to go into a synchronized order to make everything exist in its individual no i don't know that individual genius again you are making assertions we don't know i don't know that there is something external no it isn't common sense and by the way can you you raymond stop stop raymond you are not going to win the just talking over me thing i promise because i have the magic button i haven't hit it yet it is not right, common sure. sense, but even if it was, I would not brag. Common sense is not science. Common sense is what people go with, hey, at my basic level of understanding, just going with what everybody, no matter their lot in life, would understand, this is what makes sense. That's why common sense is often wrong and not something you want to brag about being the basis of your beliefs. But to your point of something is forcing all of these things to do these things. I do not know that. I do not believe that. I don't know that that there is any other way the universe could be, which people who want to talk about how come the constants are, are tuned to the exact numbers we need. I don't know. And I admit I don't know because I also don't know that it's possible for them to be anything else. Maybe it is. Maybe every kind of universe that can exist also exists. I don't know if that's true. I don't even know if that's possible. And I admit that which I don't know. But you sit here and go, well, my common sense says that something is forcing water to boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Mine says something is forcing gravity to operate in this way relative to mass and location. I am forced, something is forcing the speed of light to not go faster or slower than what it goes in a vacuum. I don't know that that's true at all. And I don't know that it could be any other way that a photon could behave any other way differently. I say, I don't know because we, no one knows. In fact, not only do I say, I don't know, I'm going to assert, Raymond, that you don't know. But you will sit well, there and go, I, mm, I, I, I'm using common sense, which has never cured fucking cancer, to answer questions bigger than the cure for cancer. And those com- that common sense thing of somebody has to be moving the photon and keeping it at that speed, that beats your, I don't know, because it's not right to say you do know when you couldn't know. Now there's some body, some thing. See, so now this is what I'm saying. Even in nature, even in the natural realm. Thing. It doesn't matter. Either way, body again? or thing, doesn't matter. You, you tried to get pedantic about the phrasing, something or somebody, it doesn't matter. It would just switch the words out. My rant is the same. I don't know that there is some thing forcing photons to behave a specific way. I don't know that photons could behave a different way if if something changed or not. I do know that photons do sometimes behave differently in different environments. Those are external stimuli that we can actually, stimuli is the wrong word for it, but external factors that we can actually measure. That stuff I know, but this unmeasurable force of, seemingly magic that is keeping track of every photon and the speed that they're at and making sure it's consistent. I don't know that something or somebody like that exists. Well, you know, by evidence that the product is operating in their order and you know that everything that is made by humans, there's a construct that makes that construct and machine flow. 
So now this yes, means I know, that I know that you it's like things. in nature, You're... it's like in the material, that there's an order that's designed by a higher entity than the byproduct. So now just like no. in the natural, in the physical, there is manipulation going so where there's a Going running car, smooth running car, and there's a manipulation going on where there's a smooth running universe. And there's manipulation going on where now Raymond, the man can I can literally do use all this. This parts. metaphor is so weak that I could use it to defend humans eating poop. I'm not kidding. I could just go look out at nature and look at what sustains so many creatures. And we see that some of the most resilient life in the world, some of the life in the world that lives almost in a way that they are immortal, they uh, can replicate better than humans. They are some of the most resilient life that exists in the known universe. They consume detritus and feces primarily. And so when you look at that, yeah, that is how weak your metaphor is. Just because okay, something can, no, does no, it, that is a weak stop, metaphor. stop, stop your metaphor. I'm talking about your metaphor. Your metaphor is oh, okay. something else is designed. Therefore, something else which works well, or sorry, something that works well is designed, which by the way, also things that work like shit humans make. Uh, humans make things that work like shit all the time, but something that works well is designed. Therefore, a universe that works well must be designed. And so I turn that into, well, things which live well and most resiliently eat poop. Therefore, for humans to live well and resiliently, they should eat poop. Let them eat poop. Raymond, last thoughts from you, because I'm, I'm frankly, I, I don't know how 22 minutes later we still haven't gotten the same point through to you. But here's okay, your last so piece. I'll give you Eric, did you have more back and forth you want to do with Raymond first? Um nothing we have already Hang covered. On. Raymond Raymond, All you're right. pointing out con you're, Raymond, you're you're pointing out what appear to be ordered processes in the universe. You're pointing out constant phenomenon we see, which we humans call laws. And you're basically throwing your hands up and saying, I don't know how else this could have come about other than this was created. That's not an argument, that's not evidence. You're not gonna convince us of that. Okay, so now, and, and I'm I'm not trying to convince, I'm just trying to um, give my point of view of what I see. And, uh, and to the um, metaphor, I would say, see, now, we're human animals. So we have a human nature, and then we have an animal nature. And when these two come together, then now you have the supreme being apex of the planet. Because no other animal has the ability to raise it and use the conscious mind like ours. So, so Raymond, Raymond, that, Raymond, sorry. you're arbitrarily dividing up. You're arbitrarily dividing up natures between humans and animals. You're claiming that they come together and give us the ability to reason. Other animals can reason. You can watch apes and certain birds no, and dolphins solve. No, Raymond, Raymond. Other yes, animals have these qualities that you're trying to say that are exclusive to us. On you're you're, you're level, completely sir? spouting falsehoods here. Uh, on, on our level, you, you mean to tell me we're not superior? Now, over, so now you're arbitrarily animals, dividing up levels animals. of. So Raymond, now you're trying to no, now I'm you're trying to move the, the you're, truth. Raymond, what you're you moving the goalposts. I just sir? Raymond, Stop I just pointed out that you are that you are trying to to arbitrarily. Divide up humans and animals, and you're setting these criteria. And when I point out that, hey, animals share these qualities as well, now you're moving the goalpost, and you're, now you're going to some arbitrary level of, of different levels of reasoning. Just because we're the apex of one thing doesn't mean we're divinely created. I didn't say that. I was responding to his That's That's the reasoning you were going at. No, I was we cut we saw oh, man. I'm surprised. I, I, it's wild. Do do too. And I'm like, we're human I, animals. I, I, again, animals again do you're talking about mean. apex. Yes, sir. You're talking about apex, and I specifically went to creatures that are more resilient than us, that are that survive better, that replicate better. We, the the idea are of saying greatest, that sir? I excuse me. Yes, in a lot of ways are they, they greatest, are. It depends sir? on what. It, depending hey, on your standard, the yes, show, they sir. are. Who's the apex? Really, sir? Here's why I'm hanging. Excuse me. Here's why I'm muting Let's you uh, again. Actually, I'm muting and then hanging up. 
because I answered your question three times. You kept repeating it and I kept answering yes. And if you pick an somewhat arbitrarily, though I can defend survivability more than you can intelligence, they are greater. They will outlive humanity. There will be these exact species that have basically been locked into their uh, uh, evolutionary place for the last several million years, even through many tragedies that humans couldn't survive. So yes, in a lot of ways, they are greater than us. If you just pick who's the smartest, then as far as we know, for what we call smart, Homo sapiens win just that one, but we almost we don't win almost any other category. We have the least number of gold medals, but we feel very self-important because one of the things that came with evolution of the brain was feelings of self-important. So Raymond, I'm not even gonna unmute you because I'm so annoyed of what you just did to show you weren't listening, that I'm just here to say, Raymond, for the love of God, do not eat poop. Goodbye. For the love of His who? original question, his original question was, um, on the thing here, it says, has questions about atheism. He originally asked us basically like, why are we atheists, right? And that's the question you answered. My response to that is, I have not seen sufficient evidence to warrant a belief in a God, and I am unwilling to cling to uh, uh, explanations that are not founded in evidence because either they make me feel better or I just simply can't explain it some other way. That's not the process yeah. that I use because I know and I can identify the fallacies behind it, so I'm not going to cling to those. And that's what, and that's what Raymond, Raymond, yeah, Raymond repeatedly demonstrated flaws in his reasoning when it came to the watchmaker argument, the equivocation fallacy, his argument from incredulity, like one after another. And it's hard to explain exactly what's going on there, especially in one phone call. It's, it's a lot to process, a lot to take in. But Raymond, you almost every step of the way there, you had some issue with your thinking that we were trying to point out to you. And he was very respectful. I mean, he stopped talking occasionally when we were saying hi. I liked him. Um, but uh, yeah, respectful Raymond tried to... to me means listening. I heard every word he gave. Yeah. He didn't hear most of yeah, mine. Yeah. It wasn't confrontational, at least, as far as I can, t I can tell. But and Raymond, yeah, go, try he... to go back and listen to that call. Raymond, go back and listen to that call and just and just try, just take a, take a section of it, listen to it, then process it. Then take the next section, listen to it, and process it. Because there, there were steps along the way where it just kind of got worse and worse because you weren't quite grasping that, hey, you're having some flaws in your thinking here. And before you can go further with what you're trying to get at, you need to first address those. Hey, it's Jimmy Snow here. I'm the executive producer on the line with a fun fact. Did you know 100% of the hosts of this channel enjoy eating? It's true. And if you would like to help contribute to their ongoing addiction, you can do so by going over to Patreon or becoming a channel member. There are show-specific, host-specific tiers. Those are awesome. But also, you can leave a super thanks with a special little highlighted comment. You can like, comment, and subscribe. All of those will help fill our, our, our widow widow bellies. By the way, check out some of these, this content over here. <laughs> Algorithm, what next?